In today's video, we are going to be going through step-by-step -step how to reduce your voice agent's telephony cost using SIP trunking, allowing you to not only import existing VoIP numbers, but also those far more cheaper local carrier numbers and connect them to your voice agents. This means that we're now able to connect any type of telephony infrastructure to our voice agents, making it accessible for every business and individual out there. Let's dive in. Before we get into the fun stuff today and building out these trunks, it's helpful to know exactly what's going on behind the scenes here. And to explain, I have a little diagram here, very minimal, but it'll help you understand what exactly we're doing. On the left here, we have the PSTN network or the public switch telephony network. This is your traditional phone network where you have your mobiles, your landlines and everything like that. And moving to the right here, we connect to a SIP provider and within Vapi, they offer a few different SIP provider integrations, including Twilio, Telnex, and Zadama, as well as another one I think they released also. And these providers act as the bridge between the internet and the PSTN network, converting digital traffic into real phone calls and vice versa. And these SIP providers are also where our numbers are hosted. So if you're familiar with importing a number to Vapi via something like Twilio, our number would sit essentially within a SIP provider, Twilio. And in between our SIP provider and our AI powered voice agents, which are in Vapi, sits this SIP trunk, essentially a virtual phone line over the internet. And this carries both audio and call control signals, allowing Vapi or our voice application to communicate with users like a regular phone call. And of course, on the right here would be our Vapi agent. So this works in an omnidirectional manner where customers from the PSTN network can call into our Vapi agent and we can distribute calls to people via our SIP trunk through our SIP provider and to the destination address. Now, what's different here with SIP as compared to importing a number as you usually would into your application like Vapi is we're employing this idea of a SIP trunk to facilitate the communication between legacy phone lines that exist on the PSTN network like a PBX system also VoIP systems and local carrier numbers. And it's because of the existence of a SIP trunk that we're able to do so. And once this has been established, we're able to receive calls, specifically AI powered voice agent calls onto these legacy phone systems and also make calls using an AI powered voice agent from these legacy phone systems. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. It's a very complicated industry the rabbit hole goes a lot deeper. So for simplicity's sake, this is a basic diagram that'll start to put in motion in your mind on how exactly this is working. So what we'll be doing today specifically is setting up a SIP trunk within Twilio, one of the most common VoIP providers out there. And the creation of this trunk will allow us to import existing PBX numbers or local carrier numbers into the Twilio ecosystem so that we can use this SIP trunk to communicate between Vapi and our desired phone numbers. And to do so, we'll head directly over to Twilio where we can start to create this trunk. Over on Twilio, we'll head over to Elastic SIP Trunks and we can create a new SIP trunk. We can call this whatever we want. For today, I'll call it Vapi YouTube and we can create that. And this will initialize a trunk that we now have to map out and set up specific to Vapi. And we'll start with setting up the trunk for outbound traffic. And to do that, we'll have to head over to the termination section. Click into this and we can start to set up our outbound ready trunk, starting with the termination SIP URI. So you can call this whatever you want, Vapi, YouTube, 
outbound. And this will be important later, but for now we'll leave as is. The next thing you'll want to do is set up authentication. So this authenticates between our Twilio trunk and the application that we're sending data to and from. So for example, this will be Vapey. And what we need to do is add two sets of IP access control lists. So go ahead and create a new access control list. And this first one will be Vapey number one. We'll need to add an IP address range. And this is the IP address associated with Vapey. So for the first one, the address will be as follows, 44.229.228.186. Select 32 here and hit create ACL. We'll create a new access control list and this will be VP2. And this is the second IP address range. So we're whitelisting IP addresses from range one to range two and everything in between. This IP address will be as follows, 44.238.1. 77.138 and again 32 creating that ACL. Once you've set up those two IP access control lists all we'll have to do now is save our trunk. Once we've successfully updated this trunk we can head over to numbers and this is where we'll associate a phone number to this trunk so that we can start to distribute calls. Now we have a lot of options here in terms of what number you're actually associating with this SIP trunk and for the purposes of this video we're not going to be porting an existing local carrier number into Twilio. Instead I'm going to be using an existing number, but I'll show you how that process works anyway. Once you've added a number, you'll be good to go. But before we get into the vapey side of things, I'll show you how exactly you would take an existing local carrier number or a legacy phone system number and port it over to Twilio. So porting a number is quite a lengthy process, but essentially you wanna go down to port and host, port a number. And this is where you start to map out the information of your port request, specifically the first and last name associated with your local carrier number that you own, address, and the actual phone number's details. You'll also have to submit documentation to authenticate with Twilio that you actually own that number and so forth. You'll go ahead and submit that and when your number has been ported into Twilio then we can assign that number with our Twilio trunk that we had just created and because this process takes some time I'm saving time by importing an existing number in my Twilio ecosystem and assigning that to our trunk. If we go back here we'll see the trunk we had just created and one thing you want to note is this termination SIP URI. And this will be important in just a moment, but as far as Twilio goes, we've created our trunk specific for outbound calling. Now what we have to do is create a credential within Vapey and then create our phone number that we can start to use to make these outbound calls. And we'll do this via the API, but you'll want to make sure that you have your API key on hand to process these API requests. When that is done, we'll head over to something like Postman. And the first thing we'll want to create is our credential. So the credentials associated with our trunk that we can use to import or create a new phone number, which is the one that has been associated with our SIP trunk. So we're creating a post request to this specific endpoint, api.vp.ai forward slash credential. Our provider is bringing our own SIP trunk, the name, we can call this whatever we want. And we have a gateway IP here, as well as outbound leading plus enabled. Now people get tricked up on this gateway IP part and there's two different types of IPs we can put in here. One would be web-based and another one would be a set of IPv4 addresses associated with Twilio. Now there are a range of different IPv4 addresses that you can use. For today's purposes, we're going to be using the web URL. Much faster this way, much easier to get you started with SIP trunking and specifically the IP is going to be that SIP URI that we had from our trunk. So the termination SIP URI here is going to be our gateway address. We can go ahead and copy that 
head back over to Postman and we'll paste that like so. I'm gonna leave the name the same here, but essentially when you've authenticated into this API request, we're at this endpoint, we can go ahead and hit send. Now the response here includes one very important detail, which is the ID here. This is essentially our credential ID that we can use to create a number associated with our SIP trunk. So we can go ahead and copy this and we'll create a new post request. And this is creating our phone number. To do that, we'll be heading to a different endpoint api.vp.ai forward slash phone dash number and our body payload will look something like this and I'll leave these in the description for you. Again, we'll have a provider bring your own phone number, the name here, you can name this whatever you wish, the number and most importantly here, the credential ID, which we can go ahead and paste in right now. The number here is going to be the number you had imported to your Twilio SIP trunk. Over in Twilio, we can see that by going under numbers here and this is the number that is used in this specific trunk head back over to the request and we'll paste that in like so now if we hit send our number has been created if we go back into vapey under phone numbers you'll see a Twilio SIP number has been created in our VP account. Now to make sure that everything works, I'm gonna go ahead and distribute an outbound call using an assistant via this trunk. And we can use whatever assistant that we want here. Just testing here, make a call, outbound call queued successfully. And I'm getting a ring if I go ahead and answer this bad boy. Hi there, this is Alex from Light and Easy Customer Support. Cool. That works perfectly, very easy to set up. Now we're gonna go in again to our trunk and set this up for inbound traffic. Inbound traffic, we'll head over to origination and we'll need to add a new origination URI. And what this is, is your number at sip.vp.ai. And you wanna type it like so, sip, and then our number plus, which we can see up here, if I just copy this, and remove all the weird formatting here at sip.vp.ai. We can go ahead and add this. And once that is saved, we're good to go. If we head back over to VP, assign an assistant to our inbound number and we'll call up that inbound number. Go ahead and we'll call this number. How can I help you today? Hey, I just successfully made a SIP trunk. That's great to hear. Cool, so there we have it as far as Twilio goes. And again, I wanna put some emphasis on associating a number with your trunk. So as far as the trunk creation goes and using that within VP, it's very easy. What people get tripped up on is how exactly do you connect legacy PBX systems and local carrier numbers to your SIP trunk. And really what we need to do is get our number within the Twilio ecosystem so that we can assign this to our trunk. And you do this by submitting an import request for an existing number into Twilio. And only then when your number exists in Twilio after a porting request, we'll be able to associate that number with our trunk we had created and then start to make VP calls from that number. And you can check if your number is available to port into Twilio by starting this portability check. And we can input the phone numbers we'd like to port in to Twilio. And this would be as simple as adding a list of the numbers that exist in a PBX environment or sit on a local carrier. And we can go ahead and check if that number is available to port. If it's not, I'd recommend checking with your carrier if you are able to port in your number to Twilio or one of the supported SIP integration providers that Vapey does offer. So Twilio, Telmex, Zadama, and Plivio, I think. But as far as creating this trunk, very easy. I'll leave these two post request bodies in the description below so you can copy and paste and use them at will. But once you've imported your number into VP using our SIP trunk, you'll be good to go. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment below. If you're looking to stay ahead of the AI curve, do hit that subscribe button. I upload weekly, but that is it for today. Until next week.